this video, I wanna take a look at chronic pain and the cause of chronic pain. Now, we've all cut our finger or grazed our knee, and this has resulted in that very short, sharp, quick, painful experience that tells you that something's wrong. And that's what pain's there for. It's to tell you that you've damaged yourself or you have the potential of damaging yourself. So it's to tell you to avoid a particular act or situation. Now, the thing is that this is acute, so short term, and it happens because you're stimulating pain receptors called nociceptors that send a direct signal to your brain. Now, it's obvious why it happens to avoid that scenario so you don't have any more tissue damage. But there's another type of pain called chronic pain which lasts for longer than three months. And there's multiple different types, one of which could be chronic pain associated with cancer. And this would still probably be termed a nociceptive pain, where the cancer is stimulating pain fibers, sending signals to the brain. But the most common cause, or the most common type of chronic pain, would be that in which we don't actually know what the stimulus is, or there's no discernible stimulus stimulating these pain receptors, these nociceptors, sending a signal to the brain. So you're thinking, or you're feeling like there's actual or potential tissue damage, but there isn't, and we can't find whether there is. So what's happening in this situation? Well, usually chronic pain arises after an individual has experienced acute pain but hasn't controlled or managed that acute pain over time. And what happens is that the painful stimulus amplifies itself. It amplifies itself so much that even once the initial stimulus has gone, let's say the cut or the bruise or the damage or the trauma or whatever it may be, even once that's gone, the pain remains. That's term sensitization, which we're gonna talk about today. Now, all your other senses, sight, taste, sound, even fine touch, the opposite happens, called desensitization. Think about when you wake up in the morning and you put your socks on. How long do you feel them for? You feel them for maybe five, 10 seconds, then you don't feel them for the rest of the day. This is your brain's way of cutting out the noise so that you can focus on the important things at hand. That's desensitization, but with pain, when you feel a little bit of it, your body amplifies it so you feel a lot of it. And it does this on purpose because it wants you to avoid the action and avoid the task so you don't damage yourself. So what ends up happening with chronic pain is that it exacerbates this process. Let's have a look. Firstly, there's two types of sensitization. There's peripheral sensitization and there's central. Peripheral is gonna be usually at the site of damage and central is usually gonna be the brain and spinal cord. So let's have a look at these two types. What I've got here is, let's just say, a specific type of damage like trauma, for example. Let's just say this is the skin of my hand and someone has broken the skin of my hand, let's just say with a nail, for example. You've now damaged this vascularized tissue. Now remember, damage of vascularized tissue results inevitably in inflammation. The four cardinal signs of inflammation, redness, heat, pain, and swelling, all occur because blood vessels dilate, more blood gets to the area, more pores or holes become pronounced in these blood vessels, and all this fluid, blood fluid leaks out. These end up being white blood cells, but also other cells that help fight off infection. What we've got is damaged skin, and all these cells come in to help fix the scenario. These include mast cells, macrophages, neutrophil neutrophils, and T cells. A lot of these cells will either engulf the damaged tissue that's there or the invading particle, or it will spill its guts and release a whole bunch of pro-inflammatory chemicals to try and annihilate the problem that's happening here. Now, what this means is all these chemicals that come out, and there's hundreds of them, right? So for example, hydrogen ions, known as protons, ATP, serotonin, substance P, they're released. Also, bradykinins, histamine, prostaglandins, nerve growth factors, they're released as well. You're probably thinking, why have I separated them into two separate columns? Because these different types of chemicals have different effects on the pain receptor here. Now this pain receptor is ultimately gonna go into the spinal cord and then go to the brain. But let's first have a look what's happening at the pain receptor in my hand. Once these chemicals are being released, for example, hydrogen ion, ATP, serotonin, substance P, they can directly bind to receptors on my pain nerves, my nociceptors, and what they can do is they open these channels to let all these positive ions in. These positive ions include calcium and sodium. Now what does that mean? Well, remember this, your nerves have a charge difference from the inside to the outside. It's negative inside a neuron compared to outside. 
So what? Well, this negative inside, if you were to measure it, it's negative 90 compared to the outside. All right. Now, if you throw some positive ions in like calcium and sodium, it goes from negative 90 to negative 80 to negative 70, right? It's becoming more positive. Here's the thing. As soon as it goes from negative 90 and hits negative 55, this is a key. Negative 55 is a key that opens up a whole bunch of other channels down this neuron called sodium channels. Now, once they're opened up, sodium rushes in and it sends an electrical signal all the way into the spinal cord. That's termed an action potential. And that is how neurons send signals. So basically, the only way a neuron, including a pain neuron, can send a painful stimulus is it needs to become more positive inside. And the way that happens is to open channels that send positive things inside. How do we open these channels? Hydrogen ions, ATP, serotonin substance P. Where do they come from? All these cells that get activated when tissue is damaged. But there's these other chemicals as well. These bradykinins, histamines, prostaglandins, all pro-inflammatory chemicals. What they do is they sensitize this neuron and they make it even easier for it to become positive inside. So it allows for this neuron not to begin at negative 90, it allows it to begin more like negative 60. So it means it only takes a small amount of positive ions to get in to send the signal. So you can directly stimulate the pain receptors or you can change the threshold of the neuron to make it easier to send a signal. Now, this is the thing. When you stimulate a pain neuron to send a signal, it itself releases chemicals. These are called neurogenic inflammatory chemicals, okay? Now, these neurogenic inflammatory chemicals include substance P, CGRP, which is calcitonin gene-related proteins, cytokines and chemokines. What they do is they stimulate this inflammatory process again. So have a look. It all happens in this cyclical manner. It exacerbates itself. It, once it happens once, it continues to happen so that you continue to get a pain stimulus until you stop the initial cause. Once you stop that initial cause, this doesn't happen, this doesn't happen, and that doesn't happen. All right. So that means that anytime you get a painful stimulus, you need to do whatever you can possible to stop that pain. That means stop what's causing it, or maybe take some non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, for example, or some anti-inflammatory drugs. All right. This is termed peripheral sensitization. If it continues to exacerbate, it's called peripheral sensitization. But let's have a look at what's happening. Once this signal goes into the spinal cord, and speaks, remember this is the first pain neuron, it's speaking to the second pain neuron in the dorsal gray horn of your spinal cord. So it's going down my arm into my spinal cord and it's having a chat with the next one. That next neuron goes to the other side and goes up to the brain, speak to the brain, tell you you're experiencing pain. Now let's zoom in and see what's happening here at the conversation between the first pain and second pain receptor. We've got it up here. First pain, second pain receptor. Well. Because it's a stimulated neuron, it's releasing a whole bunch of chemicals. These in include glutamate, which is an excitatory neurotransmitter, substance P, excitatory neurotransmitter, again, CGRP, which we spoke about here, calcitonin gene-related protein, and also cytokines and chemokines. What they do, again, bind to receptors on this pain neuron, and they open the channels and let positive ions in, calcium, sodium, stimulating the action potential and continuing to send the signal up to the brain. But there's a couple of other things happening. There are glial cells here. These are helping cells. Glial cells like astrocytes have these arms that reach out and they maintain the micro environment where these two neurons are. And what they do is when they sense that a signal's been sent, they get stimulated to release more cytokines. And again, you've got this amplified signal that's happening in this area. Now, if this continues to happen, peripheral sensitization, this continues to happen, central sensitization, and even if you stop this after a certain period of time, even if you stopped the cause here, this little micro circuit or micro environment can continue to amplify itself. And this means that even without a known stimulus, chronic pain centrally in the spinal cord can continue to occur. And the reason why is because, remember I said how some of these substances can drop the threshold, make it easier for a pain signal to be sent. It can change the threshold so much that even a normal touch signal stimulates pain. Think about it. If a normal pain a touch signal, like just rubbing the hand, came in and stimulated the pain signal, it continues to exacerbate. So even just touch signals 
amplify the pain signal. And this can happen for many, many years. And this is one of the main reasons why chronic pain occurs.